Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So today I'm going to show you how to install a 7 inch screen on your Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is their 7 inch touchscreen. Uh, the integration is actually quite nice. So I'm going to walk through the process of setting all of that up and go over a couple uh, mounting options, whether you want to mount it to your printer or not. Today's video is going to be a little bit more generic, just talking about the setup and how to actually do everything. And then next week I'm going to do a video on how to get everything set up to work with Octo screen uh, which is a really nice interface it kind of gives you a quicker connection to the printer if you're using Octoprint uh, versus just using the web UI but that'll be a video for next week today I want to focus on the install or the hardware portion of it all right so first let's talk about what you're going to need you're obviously you're going to need the screen uh, this is the 7 inch touchscreen that's using the DSi port uh, for the display so the integration is pretty simple uh, when we walk through the install process, you'll see that you're actually going to be connecting your power to the display itself, not to the actual Raspberry Pi. Um, so we'll talk about what pins need to be connected to transfer the power over. And this will work with pretty much any of the newer Raspberry Pis. I've tested it with my 3 Plus, and this is a 4, and so it'll work with pretty much all of the newer ones. If you go back to some of the previous gen, I believe the 2B works. Just make sure it has the DSi port on it and just check compatibility if you are using an older Raspberry Pi. All right, so before we get started, uh, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's really gonna help the channel grow. And then if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below or join us on Discord. I'll try to help you out as much as I can. All right, first let's talk about mounting options. I've got two that I wanna cover here and then there's one more that I have um, that I'll just post below and it basically it's similar to uh, the first one I'm going to go over but it's kind of a standalone option where it's got the big case and the back is enclosed. All right, but the first one is if you're using a 3D printer, uh, you might want to actually mount it to the printer itself just so you don't have to move it around. If you're only using one printer, that's a good option. But if you're not using it for a 3D printer or if you're using it just for more of the gaming or just with the Raspberry Pi OS, um, I wouldn't recommend going this route. But basically with this, uh, you've got a mount here uh, that will uh, sit uh, pretty much like this on here and then your screen is going to be mounted here uh, actually go this way and uh, it will give you uh, basically everything you're looking for in terms of uh, functionality for a printer um, but like I said not necessarily the best option if you're looking to go between multiple printers or use your Raspberry Pi for different things uh, the second option I have here and this is going to be the one I'm going to use it's got a case uh, just kind of going front and back and then a case for the Raspberry Pi itself on the back just to enclose it, and then two stands. The stands are a good option if you're looking to uh, use it all the time like that, but if you're looking to kind of walk around with it, uh, I typically wouldn't use the stand, so I'm not gonna actually mount it to it. I'm just gonna use it for kind of supports, uh, but we'll go over all of that when we go through the install process. So the third one is similar to this one, like I mentioned, it's got the full enclosure, uh, but it is a standalone unit. It's not meant to mount to a printer. Um, I didn't go with that route just because it's a little bit more bulky and I was trying to keep it as thin as possible. Um, so that's why I went this route, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew it was an option. All right, so now let's go ahead and take the screen out and go through the install process. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this. Um, basically you got some instructions, uh, the screen itself here. Uh, your power pins and uh, your DSi cable and a couple of mounting screws here. So I'm just going to set this off to the side. Um, now let's go ahead and take this out of the case. So I did want to make a note that sometimes these are shipped differently depending upon when it was made. Uh, this one has the board already attached to it. Uh, some of them come with the board not attached. Uh, if that's the case, you'll want to make sure you go through and uh, attaching that first. So there's just a couple ribbon cables you have to attach and then put these two screws in. Uh, so it's not difficult. All right, now that we got everything taken apart, uh, there's a couple things I wanted to talk about before you start mounting anything. Uh, it's really going to be based on the case you're using. So if I'm going with the open back case, uh, like I mentioned a bit ago, um, so I don't have to worry about uh, having to change how I mount the Raspberry Pi on the back of here. Now you can choose to use a case 
uh, similar to this where the Raspberry Pi would sit in it just to kind of shield the back of it. Um, but I'm also not going to do that. Again, these are all preferences. Um, so it's really going to be how you want to set it up. Um, but if you are going with one of the closed back ones like this one, you want to make sure that if you mount this on here um, the normal way that it will fit like this is a thin back one uh, so you actually have to reverse the way it's mounted and make sure that you get all the ribbon cables and stuff throughout it in a way that it doesn't damage them uh, that's putting a lot of extra work into the equation that i don't know if it's necessarily worth it um, but i guess that's something you can decide uh, but like i said i'm going with the open back case uh, just because I want the flexibility to be able to move things around. The next thing I want to point out are these mounts on the back of here for M3 screws. So when I go ahead and mount the actual stands to this, it's going to be using the M3 screw just connected to that so that everything stands up the way it is. And uh, one other thing I wanted to point out is uh, when we were off video, I took off the front uh, protector. Uh, so make sure you do that now if you haven't already or at some point just before you actually mount it in the enclosure. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started with the install. The first thing we wanna do is connect our positive and negative or plus five volt and ground. If you're looking at the board here, you can see where it shows each of the markings. You wanna put the red wire where it says five volt or five V, which is gonna be right there. And then the black wire where it says ground, which is right here. So those are gonna connect like so. And then we're just gonna set this off to the side for now. And then we want to go ahead and mount the ribbon cable, which is going to go here. Uh, this is going to pop out and you're going to mount it so that the blue side is on the same side as the black. Uh, so basically it's going to be in this case, the metal prongs on the ribbon facing up. So you're going to slide that in and then just push the black connector back in so it holds it in place. Um, next thing I wanted to point out was Based on the type of power supply you have for your Raspberry Pi, uh, you're either going to connect the power to uh, this board or the actual Raspberry Pi itself. Uh, I believe the Raspberry Pi 3 uh, is going to connect here or in some of the older ones. And then if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 like this one is where it has the USB-C connector, you're going to connect the power here. So the power is going to either go from the Raspberry Pi to the board over these two or from the board to the Raspberry Pi, um, just depending upon where it needs to be connected. All right, so next what I'm going to want to do is uh, set the Raspberry Pi on here and then uh, connect the four screws. So just put in the four screws. So I'm going to do that really quick. All right, now that's done. And sorry, that took a little longer than expected uh, just because, well, that wasn't the best screwdriver, but hey, it worked. All right, so now we wanna connect our positive and negative pins. If you're looking at the pie from this angle, you're gonna have pin two, four, and six. Pins two and four are plus five volt. Pin six is ground. So I'm gonna connect this to pin two and then my ground to pin six. So basically there is a one pin gap in between. Now I get, you can also connect the uh, positive to pin four as well. I guess it doesn't make a difference um, just because of both five volt. All right, now with that done, let's go ahead and connect our ribbon cable. Again, we want the blue side connected to where the black is so that the metal pins are connected to the actual board. So that's just gonna slide in place there and pop down and uh, next, we want to go ahead and reconnect our Pi Cam. If you already have one, if you don't have one, don't worry about this step. Uh, but the ribbon cable is going to go in the same way. So that's connected. Now we can set our screen in the case. So I'm just going to pop this up, kind of just set it in place and push down. Uh, just be careful when you're pushing that you don't push too hard. You don't want to damage the screen. But you want to try to get it so it's all the way in there so that when you're looking at it from the front, it looks flush all the way across kind of like that and then uh, we'll go ahead and put the back on it just goes around and connects like this um, basically leaving this front ribbon open 
and it just pops into place. And then if you want, depending upon what you're doing, uh, there's screw holes on the bottom and on the side here that you can put through to make sure this doesn't pop back off. I'm still playing with different cases, so I'm not gonna do all that, uh, but that's an option that you can choose to do. All right, now let's go ahead and flip this around. Um, th this ribbon cable is the bottom of the screen, so you wanna make sure that you're mounting it as such. Uh, so then we would take our mounts, go ahead and just kind of slide these in here, and then uh, screw them in place. All right, before I go ahead and speed up the recording, what I want to do is make a note that um, you want to use M3 eight millimeter screws. That's what I have here. Uh, the six millimeters is too short and the 12 is going to be too long. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-seat the screws into the mounts and then go ahead and screw it in place. All right, now that those are in place, what I'm gonna do is power it on. So I'm just gonna plug this into the USB-C port on the Pi itself. But remember, if you have the old connector, you're gonna to have to go that route. All right, then you can see here that it was booting up. Now, I do wanna make a note that with the USB-C cable that I had, I had to play around with it for a little bit to get it to line right. Um, it's a tight fit, uh, so just keep that in mind. All right, so again, sorry about some of the uh, crudeness around actually connecting some of this stuff. I'm not positive if this is the actual case I'm gonna use long-term just because I wanna play around with a couple different ones, but this is a good starter case. It works and um, it will meet your needs. Uh, if you wanted to go with the flat one or the one that can actually mount directly on the printer, like I said, like this one, you will have to reverse the board order and kind of play with that a little bit. Now, if you're just booting into uh, Octopi, you've got a direct shell interface to this now. It'd be similar to what you'd get if you were to SSH into it. Uh, if you were booting into Pi OS, your touchscreen would be completely usable at this point. All right, so at this point, you have a usable setup. You're gonna have to figure out which route you wanna go as far as how you wanna use the screen. Uh, like this video was geared more towards the hardware install. Uh, if you already have the Pi OS, uh, it will go ahead and work for you. If you don't, and if you're looking to run like OctoScreen, I'm gonna cover that install process next week. Um, basically, there's a, we have to SSH into it, and then there's a couple things that we have to install, uh, basically to give it the direct connection to the board so that the touchscreen works, and so that uh, when you're going through, uh, you actually get that quicker interface than just using the web UI. At this point, you would be able to connect um, your printer to the Raspberry Pi, and it would function the same way it would before. All right, guys, so that was the hardware install side of uh, setting up the Raspberry Pi touchscreen. Uh, for those of you who use Octoprint, uh, tune in next week and I will go over the OctoScreen install. I didn't want to bundle them together because I figured there'd be a mixed audience on this video. Separating it out like this allows me to go into more detail on individual components without it being a 30 to 40 minute video. But if you have any questions or uh, ran into any issues, go ahead and leave a comment below. I can try to help you out as much as I can, or you can join us on Discord. Thanks.